going into Elden Ring, I didn't know what to expect. The developer FromSoft is pretty secretive with their projects. From a couple snippets of gameplay footage shown before release, I knew that we could expect a horse to ride on, a somber but beautiful open world to explore, and plenty of enemies to grind our bones into dust. What I didn't expect was to face one of gaming's best bosses of all time. That boss is General Radon, the Star Scourge, demigod, and mightiest champion of the Shattering. The trailer positions Radon as Goliath to Millennia's David, an imposing figure framed in a manner where the audience assumes he's the villain. In reality, General Radon is perhaps the most noble and heroic figure in all of Elden Ring. After I defeated him, I knew I had to honor him with a miniature in my collection. The model and painting was designed by Real Steve as part of his Patreon release or through MyMiniFactory.com, but this video is not sponsored. I'd also like to shout out Mr. Vincent Vertorella and the Painters Motivating Painters Facebook group for their resources and feedback on this project. Radon's armor is a brilliant example of storytelling through character design, though you may not have realized it without the benefit of hindsight in a couple lore videos. A golden lion motif is present throughout Radon's armor, an homage to the first Elden Lord Godfrey and his consort Sarosh. I base coat all the armor plates with Vallejo Game Tinny Tin. This model's gonna be a big slab of gold, so I want to make sure I'm getting some dark shadows in the recesses of the armor. Next, I base coat his cloak with a mix of Vallejo Game Charred Brown and Reaper Bloodstained Red. Radon gets a base coat of Reaper Splattered Crimson for his signature red mane of hair. Leonard the Horse gets a nice base coat of Charred Brown. Now that everything is base coated, I began to add darker shadows to the armor by doing an all-over wash of Citadel Nuln Oil and Druchi Violet. I figure with this much intricate detail in the armor, dry brushing the highlights is probably the way to go. I first apply Citadel Retributor Armor. I do a lighter dry brush with Vallejo Metal Color pale burnt metal to catch the highest details and push the contrast. I then go back and glaze in Retributor armor all over. This turns our highest silver highlights into a nice gold highlight, as well as returning the metallic quality to the shadows where the wash muted them. Radon is one of three demigod children, resulting from the union between the mighty sorceress Renala and the fiery-haired Radagon, a form taken by Queen Merica herself. Radon inherited his red hair from his father and the arcane prowess of his mother. I approach the hair by painting in various lengths of highlights using Citadel Ushabti Bone. I then glaze over all the hair using Vallejo Game gory red to color the highlights. I add various yellows, oranges, and red inks and glazes to add more variation. You can do this as much as you want. The more variation you add, the better the effect looks. I repeat this process, placing new highlights with the Shabti bone and going back over small portions of old highlights to strengthen them. Leonard the horse gets the same treatment on a smaller scale. Shadowed by Radon's massive frame, you may have missed the scrawny horse Leonard. Leonard is performing the Herculean feat of carrying the weight of a 40 foot tall demigod. It seems that at any moment, Leonard's legs may buckle and he would be crushed under Radon's weight. It's here we discover the most humanizing and endearing quality of Radon. He loves his horse companion more than anything in the world. When Radon was young, he was small enough to ride Leonard without issue. But as he grew in size, 
it was quickly apparent that he would no longer be able to ride Leonard without hurting the small horse. Radon then left to master gravitational magic at a nearby academy for the sole purpose of not hurting Leonard when they rode together. Leonard's model is pretty plain, so I wanted to impart the look of fur. I make small vertical hatches on all the flat and upward facing surfaces of Leonard's body using Citadel Dryad Bark mixed with Citadel Screaming Skull. I added Vallejo Game Elfic Skin Tone to the mix for the next layer of hatches, overlapping the previous layer and focusing on areas that would be highlighted in the light. Finally, I add more Screaming Skull to that mix and focus on an even smaller, brighter area. I then glazed Vallejo model leather brown over the whole model to blend the fur texture and push the color into a more brown tone instead of ivory. Radon's cape is another statement of his admiration for the Elden Lord Godfrey. Radon is referred to as the Lord of the Battlefield's Lion, that Lord being Godfrey. Radon stylized his cape with a lion motif just like his armor. The image emblazoned on the cape is that of two stylized lions back to back with the majestic Erd tree between them, one lion being Godfrey and the other Radon himself, with the divine essence of the Erd tree and the greater will linking the two of them. I started by replicating the design of the cloak on paper, a difficult task due to the weathering and damage on the cape's design in-game. I then took this initial design, shrank it, and simplified it. I redesigned and simplified it one more time to the scale that I'd be painting at. I replicated the simplified design onto the cape itself using pencil. Next, I traced over the pencil using a gray color, building out the initial design in paint. This stage is messy and trying to make it perfect in one try is pointless. After the design was traced, I defined the 3D forms of the pattern by adding shadows where elements overlap using Citadel Abaddon Black. I also cleaned up some of the shapes from the previous step. Next, I filled in all of the shapes with Vallejo Game Parasite Brown to act as a base coat for the gold. Every step in the process is a chance to refine from the previous steps before. I then began highlighting areas where the design crosses over folds in the cape using Screaming Skull. I'm using diagonal hatches in the highlighting process to simulate a woven quality to the thread. Now I begin blending the highlights of the freehand with the base coat, mixing Parasite Brown and Citadel Averlin Sunset. Next, I darken the brown shadows in the recesses of the cape using Dalarauni Sepia Ink. I then glazed over the entire freehand design with Averlin Sunset to give it a more golden look and to blend the layers. Radon's two great swords are decorated at the hilt with lion's mane motif, and the blades are etched with the runic symbols of gravity magic. Radon's godly strength and his aptitude for sorcery are the tools he uses to enforce his will on the lands between. Similar to the freehand on the cape, I recreated and simplified the design of his swords in pencil. Once the runes on the swords were finished, I stippled Citadel Gehenna's gold over the design to give it a rougher and more striking appearance. I then added some weathering and damage to the swords using Citadel Celestia Grey and Abaddon Black. In a last resort of desperation to defeat Radon, Millennia unleashes a terrible biological attack, forever poisoning the entire continent with a deadly plague. General Radon is cursed ever to wander. Eaten from the inside by Melania's scarlet rot, his wits are long gone.
Now he gathers the corpses of former friends and foes alike, gorging on them like a dog. Even in Radon's lowly state, traces of the great star scourge remain. Though his mind is rotted, Radon still employs his magic to lessen the burden on his faithful steed Leonard. Radon's Red Lion army is still loyal and maintains their fortress. His soldiers hold the Radon Festival, where champions from across the lands between are invited to try and give Radon the warrior's death that he deserves. After the player defeats Radon, we witness the true reason behind the moniker of Star Scourge. Radon was using his magic to hold the very cosmos in place and stop the machinations of his traitorous siblings and their celestial patrons. While Radon waged war in the aftermath of the shattering of the Elden Ring, he held the stars in check. While he fought the demigod Millennia to a standstill, he lifted his weight off of his beloved horse. While his brain rotted with Millennia's plague, he fought to maintain the golden order established by his hero Godfrey and the goddess Queen Merica. The title of Star Scourge is not a title given because Radon uses the magic of gravity and celestial forces. It's given because Radon is the enemy of cosmic level beings who would interfere in the lands between. Radon is an incredibly powerful, heroic, animal loving, inspiring leader and the player character is just some guy with a knife. Radon is perhaps the most compelling demigod in Elden Ring and my personal favorite. His boss fight is a spectacle that is both difficult and fair, perfectly balanced. Unlike this model, which kept falling over and broke more times than I can remember. Though that's probably due in part to the type of resin I used. If you have recommendations for sturdy resins that still have good detail, I'd love to hear about in the comments. Who is your favorite demigod from Elden Ring? Is Radon upholding an immoral and dysfunctional rule by the Greater Will? Is Rani's ambition to destroy the Golden Order justified? Does the loathsome dung eater really eat dung? Let me know what you think. I want to thank you for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. I've been Sky from The Cozy Painter, and until next time, stay cozy.